I hate to be the one that tells you this, but not everyone who tries to become a self-taught programmer is going to do it. There are literally thousands of people who are trying this and many of them will fail and many have failed. And one of the reasons why is they don't know how to learn. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you the five rules to learn any programming language. These are proven principles that I've seen that if you follow will help you to get better results. So when it comes to learning a programming language, the first thing I see amongst the failures is really the way that they set their goals. So when you want to learn something like Python, you may say something like, I want to learn Python. I want to know Python, right? That's your goal. But there's no such thing as knowing Python. Python itself or any programming language, it's a tool. It's a tool that you can use to create software, to build something. Just like knowing about a hammer doesn't mean that you know how to build a shed. So if you start with this as your goal, you're going to end up doing a lot of different activities, but you're probably going to be lost because you don't know why you're even learning it or what you're trying to do. So the first rule here is you need to have crystal clear goals. So this means that you could do something like have it as a goal to complete a hard coding challenge or a very difficult coding challenge on any of the coding challenging websites like Elite Code, HackerRank, I prefer edibit.com, or even better in my opinion is to build a project or make it a goal to build a project. Something like a calculator app works, even simpler is fine. Once you complete that, you can make it a goal to build even more difficult projects. Having this clear goal in mind, it will give you better context for what you're learning. So you're not just learning random facts, landing random theory, you're actually gonna apply that towards something. It'll give you a goal of what you're trying to do. Now, once you've set yourself up with these crystal clear goals, you're gonna wanna go out there, buy books, buy courses, just go ahead and dive into them, but that's not enough. There's been plenty of people who have collected more courses than you and I could probably ever collect in a lifetime, but that didn't make them successful, right? Just like you could learn about fitness, you could learn about nutrition, but if, unless you're going to the gym, you're applying that information when you make your meals, it's not going to matter. So this leads us to rule number two, which is you have to have a good even mix of application and theory, right? So learning and doing. Now, a good example of this, let's say you buy a book, you're reading through it, it's describing how if statements work, or maybe it's walking you through how for loops work. It's not good enough to just consume that information and say, well, I, I get it, it makes sense to me. You have to take it and you have to apply it in some meaningful way. So go back to your goals on this one, right? So if your goal is to complete hard coding challenges, maybe you start with some easy ones and apply those if statements, apply those for loops. Or maybe it's that you want to start with some smaller projects and start using the if statements and for loops. Or if you find some really good learning resources, they should have practice problems. So you know the thing that I recommend, if you're a follower of my channel, you should know this. I recommend the Head First series of books. Head First JavaScript is my favorite one. For example, there's a really great practice problem you can actually do right now here on page 69. Yep, go ahead and follow that advice right there. And by the way, don't forget to hit the bell icon as well so you get notifications anytime I put out a new video. Now in all seriousness, this leads to our third rule, which is to solve problems and lots of them. So we've established that it's not good enough to know theory. You have to actually apply what you're learning, but it's even more important to understand that as a programmer, your goal is to have a problem and to solve it. So if I were to give you an array of names here, could you use a programming language to sort through that and output that alphabetically, right? That's really gonna be the true test of it. So you want to be constantly practicing all sorts of dynamic problems, right? So coding challenges are great, projects are really, really good because you're gonna be getting all sorts of problems, right? You're gonna be writing code, it's not gonna work. Well, do you have debugging tools that you can use? And the more complicated your projects get, like the bigger they get, the more ambitious they get, the more the weird types of problems you're gonna run into, and you really have to sort of bend your brain and really think outside the box. This is the type of thinking that gets you paid six figures or more. So if you really wanna become a programmer, you have to practice over and over and over again. Now, if you're finding it hard to practice, so you don't know exactly what to do, you're kind of lacking direction, my favorite recommendation for this is edibit.com. Now, full transparency here, edibit.com is a sponsor of the channel, but the reason I like edibit.com, and I recommend it to a lot of my clients, by the way, is because it has a super simple interface, right? So you can pick the type of programming challenges you want in a number of different programming languages. You also can get supplemental information. So if you're having trouble solving a problem, it will help you a little bit. And you can see other people's solutions that they provide so you can learn after you've completed the problem. I love it. So if you wanna check that out, I will leave a link in the description below if you wanna help support the channel. Okay, so solving lots of problems is going to lead to steady and incremental improvement. But rule number four here is that you also need feedback. So say you create a solution, you write some code out, it solves a problem. Could it be better? The answer is yes, it could be better. If you're just new to this, it's, you're not writing that great of code, to be honest. So you have to find ways to get feedback. 
Now, edibit.com is great. I just mentioned that you can see other people's solutions and you can think through why maybe yours is better or theirs is better. That's a great way to do it if you don't have a lot of resources that are available. Or you could do something like join an online group, online forum, Discord channel. You can join a mentorship program like mine where you get feedback. Anything like that can be very helpful because it will help shorten the learning curve. Now we've gone through these first four rules. You may think you're on your way to programming success, but I'm gonna pump the brakes a little bit here because there's plenty of people who know these principles, right? They're studying 40, 50, 60 hours a week. They know what they should be doing, but they've been doing this for a year, two years, and they just bought their 35th course on Udemy. They're still about as far away from becoming a software developer as anybody. So the fifth rule that really glues everything together is that you need to be A, consistent, and you need to take the correct actions on a regular basis, right? So what I mean by that is that this, it means nothing if you're not consistent. So if you're doing this every other week, if you're doing this every couple of days, you just are not developing the neural pathways in your brain. You're not going to build up the skill that is necessary if you're not consistent. And then the second thing is you have to be taking the correct action, right? So we talked about all the things that you should be doing, not dipping too much into theory, making sure you're practicing a ton, making sure that you're getting feedback. If you're not actually doing this, if you're still just stuck in theory land because you're too scared, to actually start building your own projects or start completing coding challenges, then you're just going to end up lost and not actually reaching your goal. Now, please keep in mind with this, I'm not talking about perfection. You will absolutely have bad days. You'll have good days, by the way. The key is to show up as much as possible, right? 80% of success is just showing up. Now, let me ask you a question. Are you an aspiring software developer, right? Are you an aspiring self-taught programmer? If you are, I have a mentorship program that you may be interested in, right? So I help mentor people to get into this field, to become programmers. Now, if you are interested, you're gonna to have to take an assessment call with me, which I will leave a link to that in the description below. Um, but we do everything from really helping you get set up with a plan, making sure that you have support, that you have feedback as well. Now, I'm looking for really committed people, people who are absolutely trying to do this. This is not something that's just a hobby. So I will go ahead and leave all the information in the description below of how you can get started with that. Other than that, thank you so much as always for watching. Peace out everybody.